Good morning, people. It is Erda Boy. Today we are making some sausage, something a little different for you. We have a bin full. We got deer and we got bacon. We got about 15 pounds of deer, 10 pounds of bacon. So it's a 25 pound mix. Because the packets, I get a seasoning and such after 25 pounds, so it makes it easy. So now we're going to mix up the seasoning with whatever water we need, mix it in to the pork and the deer, and then get it through the grinder which is right here, and then grind it, do a double grind, add some cheese, sheesh, we're getting serious up in here, and then go ahead and stuff it, and I'll bring you guys along for the ride, show you what I do, how I do it, and then in the next video, you're going to see us eat this sausage in the woods at our little bushcraft camp. All right, so to get started, I put my seasoning on before I grind, and that way when I grind, it like works itself really good into the meat there, so... That's what we're gonna do, season first, and then grind later. Throw half of that on, give it a quick mix, make a mess. And this part isn't crazy serious, so you don't gotta mix it right thoroughly, because we are gonna still grind it and then mix again at the end, just to make sure it's fully incorporated and add the cheese and all that good stuff. It's more just to get that seasoning kinda initially throughout it here. We're gonna add the rest of it. And so we're using a maple cure and a Polish kielbasa seasoning. And that's what we got going on. And then we're gonna smoke it. Add that cheddar cheese in there. And I'm also going to add a little bit of liquid smoke to just help. It helps incorporate a little bit of flavor in there, you know? That looks like a good start. We'll bring it over to the table and get her ground. <clears throat> so now we have our deer. Bacon, the grinder, and the tub. So we're gonna grind it from here and here. We have a coarse grind blade on, or plate. So there's a fine one. You can see it's pretty fine, it's four and a half mil. We have a seven mil on there. We're going to do one round through the seven mil, give her a good mix, one round through the four and a half mil. And then we're done the grind, and we're gonna mix in the cheese, the smoke, all that good stuff, and go on to the next step. Also gonna have some coffee. It's always a good idea to pre-load your grinder. You don't want the thing running dry, like without any meat in the auger. That's just steel on steel. So the least amount of time you can have that happen, the better. So you can get that loaded up, start it up, get this whole bunch of meat all ground. Oh. I guess in the meantime, have you guys fall off? What the crap? Killing me. Got meat on my hands, got a rearrange a camera. What a what a nightmare. Maybe I can get this figured out a little better. Okay, hopefully that doesn't fall again. Keep on going. took quite a while. 25 pounds of meat to this grinder is quite the feed. But now we're gonna go through one more time. I'll bring you guys over so you can look at what the meat looks like. It's pretty good. Yeah, 15 minutes for 25 pounds. So this is just a Cabela's heavy duty grinder, I think. It's like a hundred bucks on sale, so that's why I got it. But my dad picked up one of those carnivore grinders from Cabela's. But not even close. Did like 25 pounds of meat in like three minutes or four minutes or something. It also costs like, you know, 700 bucks. I am also wearing gloves. There's two reasons for that. One, my hands are super cold in this meat. And the second reason is I don't like washing my hands 3,000 times. And I'm done with the gloves, just throw them out. And then my hands are clean. We'll go through the four and a half grind now. And then we will be done the grinding portion. And then we'll get all the liquid smoke, cheese, and water incorporated in this. And then get ready for stuffing. To change out the plate, it's pretty simple. You will go now. Like that. Get yeah, that fat from the bacon. If it was warm or like room temperature even, or even fridge temperature, it'd be no go. You gotta get it cold. Lucky for me, I live in Canada, so putting it outside for an hour does that. Four and a half millimeter plate, switch our totes around. And these meat tubs are worth every penny. You get them at Cabela's, Princess Auto, or whatever. Body boy. It saves you so much headache with like getting big old containers here and there and getting everything you know, kind of in place. This is just the easy, no fuss way to do things. Now we're gonna go through and do the four and a half mil. All 
right, just like that, we are done the fine grind. Don't know if you noticed, but at the end there, I grabbed a chunk of the four and a half mil grind that I already did and put it back through. The reason for that is it'll have some of the coarse grind from your last plunge get stuck in there, right in the auger, where it just doesn't push out. So you chase it with a little four and a half, it pushes the remaining coarse grind through, makes it all uniform, and then you don't have any chunks of anything left. Because you're eating this stuff, if you have some bigger chunks in there, it just isn't quite the same mouthfeel. We're all about the mouthfeel on this, boys. I need the mouthfeel. Also, it's getting to the point where it's kind of sticking. So we're gonna cool it down again and just throw it in the garage to do that. And while we're doing that, we can prep everything else for stuffing so it is ready to rock. Okay, so we got cheese, we got liquid smoke, need water. Two water bottles. Okay. And as you can see, everything I'm doing here is like a common man way of doing things, meaning anyone can do it. I am not a professional. Who am I kidding? I'm a professional. But I'm not like you know, years under my belt kind of good. So everything I'm doing here, you guys could do with a hand grinder. I'm using a hand stuffer. You can just go and buy the pre-made kits. You can go to the butcher and you can get nice seasonings, whatever you want to do. But all said and done, like that grind is a hundred bucks. This stuff is a hundred bucks on sale. This tub is like 10 bucks. So all the stuff I've used so far is 100, 200, 210, 220 bucks. And that's the whole setup. And from start to finish, we can get this done. Aside from that, you just gotta buy your seasonings, meats. You can use deer, you can use bear, you can use cow, like beef. You can use anything you could possibly think of and cut it with pork if it's a red meat. And then you got sausage and it's that easy. I wouldn't make breakfast sausage necessarily, you can. I just don't because it's pretty lean, but I, I like a nice fatty, like juicy breakfast sausage. These are still juicy, you'll see at the end. We're gonna cook one up before the, before the day's up here. But nonetheless, okay, liquid smoke. I have no idea how much to use because it's super concentrated. But, it's like smelling salts right there. All right, I don't know what to do with that. With that, just to add some water, add some liquid smoke to the water bottle. We're just going for low flavor, so we'll just do that. That should be enough. I don't even know. That's like, give you guys a measurement on that. I probably have a teaspoon of liquid smoke in here. One teaspoon of this concentrated stuff. I feel like that should be enough. I feel good about that. It's almost like, like soda. Soda popped it up. That's one bottle in. We'll do another half a bottle-ish. And we'll keep another half a bottle just for extra. When you're stuffing, you want the stuff pretty wet like this. It actually helps a ton. That's like a key step here. Do not miss it. Get your butcher knife. You gotta have a butcher knife. Cheese, I'm doing 10% ratio of cheese to meat. 25 pounds of meat. You have a one pound bag and one and a half pound bag. So two and a half total pounds of cheese. Put that in there. And this is proper high temp cheddar cheese. High temp's important. If you just use regular cheddar cheese, I can guarantee you it's not gonna turn out good. It's gonna like melt when you try and smoke it. It's gonna just ooze out. It's not gonna stay in place. Just get high temp cheddar cheese. You can find it online or you can find it at your local butcher if he has it. Uh, if you're around the Alberta area, there's a guy in Red Deer. He actually supplies it to a lot of the butchers in the area. I just go to him and it's like a half the price because he's the direct supplier. So anyway, I'm gonna mix this up. <laughs> You can also get meat mixers if you don't want to do this by hand. This is like a big old auger pretty much. You also don't get anything stuck to the sides when you mix it by hand, whereas those meat mixers are notorious for getting things stuck to the side. It's never perfect unless they have those rubber, kind of like your KitchenAid would have. That smells so good. This, the liquid smoke already, I can smell it. The cool boss, the flavoring, like everything about this is going to be absolutely amazing. The good way for me to tell if it's mixed enough is just seeing that cheese evenly distributed. Once again, best part about the gloves. So when you're done, you do this. And your hands are clean. Okay, yeah, so we're ready to get this party started. Add a little bit more water. Don't skimp on the water. You can feel if it's sticky like this, it's gonna stuff sticky. You don't want it to be sticky when you're stuffing. It'll make the whole process very difficult. So that right now is one liter of water. Let's see how it feels. It's already feeling better. You don't over mix your meat either. You just keep on folding it like this. You don't want to go like too crazy on you know, squishing it or anything. They just end up breaking down proteins and such, allegedly. I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but that's what they say. Get like fistfuls of meat like that. Just like grab a chunk of meat, put it in your stuffer. Try to get a bunch of the air out if you can help it. Just flatten it out down there. All right, we're gonna try that for our first go stuffing. Now this first go, we're really paying attention to how it stuffs because if we need to have more water, we can. Another reason for gloves, 
check this out. Take your glove off, and then throughout the process, you put it on, it's time to play with your meat. Ha, ah, fine. And you take it off when you're not touching your meat. Ha, ah, funny. Okay, now we're ready to stuff. We're gonna just shove this under here. This stuffer has a little air release valve on it, the old thing. We're gonna push that down until we get to the meat. Look at that, you can see the meat coming through the stuffing horn. Grab your casing, pull enough out to make a knot. Find any simple knot at the end, just to keep the meat from blowing out the end of it. And that is all. Okay, now we're gonna stuff this on here, like that. You see that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now, start stuffing. And you wanna hold it back with this hand. You're cranking with this one. And you'll see, with one person it's a little tricky to get the feel of this, but you'll see it's stuff. You want it to fill the casing and just keep enough tension on it with this hand here so that it pulls it. But you can see that the casing is being filled proper. It's not like, there isn't like chunks of casing. That's going really nice. And that's stuffed really nice. I don't think we have to add any more water. Gloves off. Oh, we're stuffing. Come on. Freaking camera just keeps on dropping. It's pretty lame. Hopefully that doesn't break. This here, this here. So good. Also, this coffee's hitting different. Ah, nailed that brew. Nailed it. Higher coil of sausage, that's like 10 pounds. Meat tub, for the wing. Couple more loads. We're getting there. I smoke them, I like that. And I like the idea of being able to eat it without cooking it, so I smoke it to basically edible temperature so it's safe to eat. And then when I'm out in the woods, you can eat it like salami or farmer sausage, you just cut it off and start munching. But you don't have to do that. Just leave it like this, link it, cut it, leave it in the logs, do whatever you want, freeze it. And whenever you want sausage, you got sausage. In it. Just logs of sausage, glorious. And I'm going to show you guys how to link these things. Now we're on to the linking of the sausages. The old dog here. And I'm not really good at this, but I can still kind of figure it out. So I go like, we put your hand on the table and then that distance is a good link, like from your, your thumb to your other side of your hand there. Just measure that. And then I just kind of put it like a dimple in it, kind of back and forth. And this is why you want to have space in here. So you see how it's like loose? Like it's got some like, you know, not super tight. That's good because when you do this, it gives the meat place to go. You pinch it once you feel comfortable. And then the next one, all you're gonna do is just twist the opposite way. One long one there, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. You see how that casing's nice and tight now compared to that? that wrinkly look. That's what you start with, that's what you want, right? You don't want it to be tight like that. That's too tight, that's good. And then when you end up linking it all, it becomes super tight. Just perfect, just what you want. Now I'm gonna finish up doing the other ones here and then we're gonna get one smoker. I uh, just use a Traeger pellet smoker and then I'm gonna set probably like 220 or something. Figure that out and let them smoke until they're cooked on the inside and then pull them off, put them in an ice bath and then vacuum seal them and that is it guys. So yeah, smoker's the next step. So we're at the barbecue. I'm gonna load her up. Bud. Yeah. Let her sit in there like that. Load up this rack. And then we're gonna just let her smoke until she's ready. That's it. I think that's a towel. We are now at the barbecue again. Got some still in there. And then I took off what was on the bottom because they finished earlier. Being closer to the heat and they're just in this ice bath here. Just grab some bunch of water, some snow, put it in there. They're gonna cool down right away because you don't want them to keep on cooking. They're at the right temperature. Now you wanna stop the process. Now we're gonna bring those inside. Let them sit in there for 10, 15 minutes, then take them out, dry them off, and then get them vacuum sealed. Just took these out of the ice bath and got some more in the ice bath, just cycled them through. So now we got a pile of sausage and we're just going to cut them up between the links we made and then vacuum seal them. So cut, 
package vacuum seal. And from there, we're done and you freeze them. I'll show you that. So you can see they're all cut and now we're gonna package them up. I do packages, kind of whatever comfortably fits in there. Probably five work pretty well. If you guys are planning on starting to do something like this yourself, get some of these white folding tables. Easy to clean, easy to work with. When they get dirty, you don't really care. They can get stained and you don't really care. So big win there. Now we're gonna get the vacuum sealer, seal all these bags up. So a helpful tip for you that will make your life easier. Whenever you do a bag, just wipe off where that sealer is gonna actually heat it up and seal it. Any moisture in there is gonna make it pretty hard for it to actually get a good seal. And you slip it in, make sure it's flat in there, nice. I pulse it so manually get the air and that way I can watch if there's any moisture. If it starts sucking moisture, I stop and seal it. It doesn't have to be 100% like, you know, airtight or, or it has to be airtight. You don't have to get all the air out as long as it's sealed good. It's not gonna go bad, it'll last you a long time. You can see that seal there. It's nice, no crinkles, no weird stuff. That's done. We'll just keep on doing that. Just like that, it's all sealed. Now we're gonna just label each individual one. So you know what it is, kolbasa. And then, yeah, that's the whole process. So stay tuned for the next video coming out. It's gonna be me going to that bushcraft camp I made, cooking some of these up, having a good old time, building whatever I need to build out there. Probably get more firewood as well. So at any rate, that is this video, guys. Thanks for watching, hope you learned something. If you got any advice or tips for me for making sausage, comment below. And if not, I will see you in the next one.